everybody. Hello, Happy hello. Happy Monday. Happy Mind Power Monday. And Mind Power Monday. Yes. So we are on our fourth episode of Selling to Serve. Um, so remember in the past episodes, we first build rapport number one, and then we ask lots of good questions. And by asking the questions, remember we're getting out all of the pain points and the need. Getting to the root cause. We're yes, all the problems. We're also building a lot of rapport by asking really good questions. Yes. So in the process. Hey Rose. Hey Rose. It's good to see you. So in the process of building rapport, we are asking questions and in the process of asking questions, we are building rapport to make sure that the client, there is something there to help them with. There's a, there's a need, there's a problem, right? And that you have a solution. Exactly. And that's really why we've talked about in the earlier episodes. And by the way, if you haven't seen all the episodes, this will make a lot more sense. If you go back and you can find all of our episodes in one place on YouTube, um, watch them from the beginning all the way to this one. Um, it will make a lot more sense. Uh, like we talked about before, again, to reiterate it, that's why people um, come across as being too sales salesy is because when they're going through that process of asking questions, they're really not listening to the client. And a lot of times they try to go in for the close and when they haven't either built enough value or the product or service isn't a good fit. So after you ask the questions, you find the need, then what do we do with it? What do we do with it? What do you do with the need? We link it. We link it. Back to what? Our service. Oh, the product or service that you're going with. Ah. Right? So now that you found the need from the client, now it's time to link it and say, hey, so now that you see that, you know, you've got this issue, we can solve this, this, and this. How does that sound? How does that feel? What would that look like? Yes. So like when, you, it? when you're getting through... <laughs> <laughs> nice embedded command if you're getting it. Uh, yeah, so so you, you find the pain point, you find the problem, and you could say, I can help you with that. Um, I know that one of the things that we give in our three-day business training is the, it's the languaging around how to take them from the problem to the solution, which is your service. A lot of times people will say, okay, so I can help you with, with that. Is it okay if I share what I think would be a good solution? And then you want to build value based upon whatever whatever their problem is or whatever their challenge is or whatever pain point it is. You're going to use those key words to explain what you do. Yep, yep, exactly. So when you're in this process, this is very important to check your energy because a lot of times people will have, you know, they'll, they'll be great at asking questions, they'll be great at building rapport, but then something shifts inside of them right around the time where it's to talk about what you do. Then all of a sudden the energy goes down or, or the energy gets a little bit weird Yeah. or they start to feel uncomfortable. That's when you know you've got a money block because you can't ask for the order. Yep. So if you're out there and you've got a money block and this feels weird about asking for money, asking for the order, asking for the sale, asking for the enrollment, whatever it is, that's what we need to clear out because that's keeping us from being a master coach, a master at sales to actually connect with people. Because when you, I mean, think about it this way. Do you take check or credit card? Well, that's really the close. Well, yeah, but still, we still, would buy, I mean, yeah, we're, yeah, we're yeah. getting to the close. Yeah. So we got to be, we're going to be, we're going to be bringing that energy up and we still have to have that confidence because we're actually preparing for your building and building. So this is like when you go in for the pitch. Yeah. The problem is, is that a lot of times people go in for the pitch without asking the questions or building the rapport or really truly figuring out what the problem is for the client. <laughs> and so then you're pitching based upon what we talked about before, based upon what's important to you. And a lot of times what's important to the client has nothing to do with what you think is important. Kathy said, oh, that so happens to me. Money block. Hmm. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> okay. yes, yes, yes. That's a lot of us. And and once we identify it and we're aware of it, we can actually do something about it so we yes. can serve and help more people. 
Yeah, so this is usually when people start to, if they do have money blocks or they have trouble asking for they want or what they want or having trouble to actually go into the close, during this place, we notice um, with our students that people start stumbling over their words, they start doubting themselves, the internal dialogue will start kicking on, and then they, they're self-sabotaging because everything that they say or if they're having pictures, sounds, feelings, taste, smells, self-talk of what they don't want, then they're going to create a pitch that's totally incongruent. This is the boundaries. This is where it's hard for people to decipher friendship from client yes. or lead prospect to client. This is where it usually gets really muddy and we're not upfront. We're not forthright. Most people have it. They find a lot of challenge in, Hey, so this is where we are. This is the expectation and I can help you with this, this, and this. Then we're just prepping up. We're teeing up the close. That's the very next thing that happens. Yeah. So that's why, you got to do it with a confident tonality. You have to have some good energy. You've got to yeah. be up. You want to be. You want to have confident physiology. You want to have your shoulders back. You want to get into the mindset of you are the expert, and you want to remember all the things that you write down of the things that's important to them, anything that's preventing them. Then you want to in this pitch the value of your product or service. This is where you are going in for the pitch. I hope everyone value, 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 You're value. Constantly building value. And the stuff that we teach in the training is like you're calibrating based upon the words that you're using. You're using you're looking at the client and seeing what type of facial expressions are they are they neurologically lighting up can you tell that they're getting a sparkle like are they smiling during this process because these are all cues that you're using the right words and you have enough rapport yep and if you and if those the physical cues the physiology we call it you know just a, a an external awareness right of the client what's going on right here this is the screen as far as how you're communicating if it's going in one ear and out the other then chances are we need to listen to our language and maybe change up the language. Maybe they're highly visual, maybe they're highly auditory. Either way, kinesthetic, we need to base our language and our, our, the way we build the value for the need and linking it back to our service or our, our skill set or our product. That's where language comes in so handy yeah. is listening to that because the client's going to tell us exactly what we need to do and how to respond to make those two connections, to link the product to their need to their yeah. problem, to the pain. Yeah. So also one of the things that Hang we- Hang on, wait, down, sorry. Go ahead. So if this makes sense and you're kind of getting this step four of five, because if we don't get step four, there's no going to step five. Yes. Put a, put a comment down below and say, yes, this I'm getting this. Or, hey, um, I need some more examples. Just put a comment below, um, say, yes, I'm getting it. Or yes, or I need more clarity. And if you're watching the rerun on this, um, this is selling to serve series episode four. We're linking the need right to the product or service. So, and if you haven't seen one, two, three videos, I think one of those videos we need to repost, but mm -hmm. um, there's five steps in this one, two, three, four, five step sales process, the five step sales model. And it's powerful, powerful stuff. If you're struggling in sales, if your income is struggling, if you're starting a new business as an entrepreneur or a solopreneur, sales, sales, sales. And if you're a coach out there, listen, coaches, you're a coach second. You're a sales coach first. You have to first learn sales. Sales is actually helping people uncover the problems that are actually plaguing them. As a good coach, you've got to sell. First, you've got to get a client in order to coach, right? Same with us. Just like in our trainings, we could be great trainers of NLP and sales and mindset performance. And if we do not get butts in seats, we have nobody to we're train. We're not helping anyone. It doesn't matter how great we are because if we've got an empty room, then we're not helping anybody, are we? So we've got to keep that in mind. I know some of us buck sales and reject sales. Sales first, coach second. Sales first, business owner or business consultant second. We've got to have clients and we've got to really do a better job of communicating. And I know a lot of our clients out there constantly have this struggle. So that's why we decided to do a series on it because sales is that everything. It's a, it's, it's that topic we tiptoe around. And then we wonder why we made the same amount of money last year and we haven't grown 25, 30% revenue year yeah. over year. And if you're selling and you're focused on sales, by the way, you should be growing your business a minimum of 20 to 25% a year from last year. Agreed. 100%. So keep it moving. So 
Again, remember linking the need is really asking the questions, figuring out what the need is, and then linking it to what you do. So this is when you're talking about packages. This is what, and you're gonna fill in, you're gonna take all the language that's important to them of what they wanna accomplish, all the things that they need to solve. You're gonna feed that back to them during this pitch. Yep. You're going to create your packages with all the same language. That way, you're literally, you're doing this neural logically you're lighting up the neurology of how they already think of the mind if you do that and if you found the true need the close will be easy and a moment ago you would say it like this a moment ago you said you had this 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 this, this. and this so I can help you with that so what we do is solve la 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 and imagine yourself being free of this and this and this, living the best life, um, making the money that you wanna make, having the relationships, all the things that they say, the, the things that they want in the future of what they want to accomplish, their outcomes, then you're painting the picture, you're making them hear the sounds and feel the feelings, the keyword yep. feelings that they said. And um, during this part, if you do it correctly and you build enough value in the way that they like to buy, that's another thing that we teach in the um, three-day business training is how to feed it back to them in their specific buying strategy because everybody has steps that they run through their mind internally and they need to have happen externally for them to make a decision. If you feed it back to them in a certain way that really, really gets them going, then the close will they will actually close themselves. Most salespeople struggle because they sell the way they like to be sold to. Yeah or the way they like to buy things based on strategy and decision making. And so, you know, if you can discover someone else's buying strategy just by looking at their eyes, right? Looking at their face, talking the language that your clients speak. Their keywords. That is so powerful. Not only does it shorten sales cycles, will it speed up the sales cycle, but it will actually cause the client to typically buy more with you because yeah. there's an ultimate greater response of rapport. There's a greater, uh, trust that's that's been built and when you use their language they actually realize they actually connect with your product they connect with your service far better than they would if you didn't use their language it, they feel like it's synchronicity they feel like that everything was meant to be and it all came together at the right time and that's why we say NLP allows you to truly serve your clients because you speak their language not yours so here's one example of the way you can connect need to product service so you say a moment ago, you said this, 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 and this, and you had that problem. And you know, and it sounds from what I'm hearing you say, and if they say, oh, I think, I hear, I see, it sounds like that's a really painful challenge. Like it sounds like that you feel really passionate about letting that go. So what we do, or just suppose, you could say just suppose we were to help you get this, 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 instead of that, what would that be worth? What would that be worth to you? How much value would that bring to your life? What would that look like? And how, you want to shut up. How would that feel? You want to make sure that you zip it so they can respond. Because if you feel uncomfortable, um, that's another thing we talk about is, you know, letting go of that uncomfortable, convert, that um, awkwardness of a silence in the situation. You will blow the sale because you are getting in the way of them processing the information. Put a yes in the comments below if that helps as an example of how to phrase linking the need to the um, service or product. Just put a comment below, yes. Just say yes, that helps or helps. Um, just because I wanna know if that resonates with anyone yeah. listening. Uh, what else? Also, also one thing so this is the last mind. phrase. That This is the last phrase right before the close, which is what we're gonna do the next video on. So this is like, the, it sets up the close and they go, yes, yes then you're going in for the close, the closing question, which we'll get to. Another really important thing to keep in mind is that you want to, um, unless they ask for more specificity, if you notice that they're a really detailed person, then you may want to give more details. But most of the time you want to be very big picture because if you give too much details when you're building value around your product or service of how you're going to do it and all these processes, you will totally, you can sell yourself out of the sale. 
because you may say something that bumps up against their model of the world or they think they already have experienced that again. Remember, every word that you use, the client has a specific memory and association to that word. So you wanna be very careful and only feed back the language that they used and fit it into your product or service or your packages. And you wanna stay away from processes. Processes will get you into trouble unless they ask. If they ask, then they may be uh, more of a process oriented, we call it auditory digital type of person yeah. that likes to hear the processes for them to make a decision. There's always a level of detail that needs to be answered for some, for for some, some clients and stay as big picture sure, as you as can. Possible. The bigger picture you get, you can chunk down on some of the details and get specific and then get right back up to big picture because how many of us have bought something that we never had any details? I we know do I it have. I do all, it all the, time. the time. So for it those feels of you, right and looks right. for anyone out there listening and watching this video, and maybe you're watching the rerun, if you think you've got to get down in the details in sales, and you're and you find yourself struggling to make sales, then that's exactly what is blocking you from making sales. Is you got to get up in the big picture. Some people go, well, they need I need details, I need facts, I need numbers. Yes, you do, and you can still maintain a very big picture level of that. So you don't have to get down in the details because you'll lose people in the details. We buy up in the details. We buy as, as big a picture as possible when it comes to agreement. Agreement frame is up. It's up, 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 not down in the details. And we then like again, features, we like details. A lot of times when they ask for the details, then you can go down in the details with them and help. And because when you go in for the close, then you'll know based upon if they move forward or not, if you gave them appropriate amount of details or information that they need, because then you may be doing some reframing, you may get more specific. So it's kind of calibrating, and uh, you wanna give as much big picture as possible, then go in for the close, and if they don't, if they're not, if that's not a sufficient amount of information, then you can go back and give them more details. And we'll talk more about that next time on our next episode, which is episode number five, how to close. So Hannah how actually to become has, a confident closer. Hannah has a good question. Can you talk about when you're doing this process with friends, when they want to work with you, but you don't have full faith, um, they will change? Or how do you maintain the relationship and say you won't work with them? So that's a great question. And here's the big picture of it. Not all clients are clients. Yeah. And actually at step four, typically between step three and four, you're already figuring out and you're calibrating behavior, language. You're assessing, is this client a fit for my business? Are they fit for my niche? Because if they're not your niche client, then you don't have to work with them. That's what's great about working for yourself is you don't have to work with the whole world. There's 8 billion people on the planet. You don't need to work with everyone. Um, it's okay to go ahead and let one pass through the net. That's that's what we should be doing. In fact, we turn down more clients than we take on, especially when it comes to coaching. Oh yeah. Um, because we don't, we have a very specific group of clients we work with, right? If you're a coach or a business owner, entrepreneur, you make between seventy-five to eighty-five thousand a year, and you're struggling to break through one hundred fifty to hundred to two hundred thousand dollars a year, that's our client. It's very specific, right? Um, coach, business owner, we love working with coaches because we want to have coaches transform themselves and then go transform others. So we got to get specific with the type of client. And the way we do that is by asking questions, right? Um, oh yes. I used to struggle with that getting way into the details. Yeah. So big yes. picture. So big picture. Um, when it comes down to linking that need to your service and product, and it's like, yes, it's going to be, you're going to get this, 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 and this. Um, so, and then five, we'll get into that. Are you ready to get started? Is it your intentions to work with us? which kind of jumped the gun on that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, we'll talk about it on our next one. Yes. So, uh, task, is there a task? Tasking. So go out there and use step one through four. Yeah, step one. Because you're almost there, step one through five. The next and one is ask for the close. If you do it right, the close will happen easy. Yeah, if you get really good at three and four. So step one, what is it? Build rapport, rapport. right? Physiology, body language, posture, gesture, tonality, if you're on the phone. Predicates, two, if you don't know all this, asking questions. come to our three-day training. Yes, I'm asking not saying questions, you should come, but you might want and to. And if you do, you'll get Step a list two, of all the questions to ask. Ask questions, lots yes. of questions, lots of questions, lots of questions. You're building rapport as you're asking questions. Step three. Find the need as you're asking questions and you're building rapport. By the way, all of this stuff is simultaneous. You're finding the, the need, need by asking questions as you build rapport. Yes. Whoa, wait, I probably lost somebody there. <laughs> but yes, I get it. I get it. Down below. Then, put it put a comment below I get it if you get one two and three if you don't get one two and three it's gonna be tough to do step and again four. go back and watch this on our videos and YouTube 
um, and then link the need to your product or service. And this is when you pitch. This is why people, they get into trouble because they pitch way before all the other steps. Step and four is don't you're, pitch until you you're at one, two, three, four, four is you're starting you're to summit. You're starting to summit. Yeah. Step five is we're going to get to the top. We are going to summit. Yes. So step because four. You pitch before yeah. you know nothing about the client. And so you're going in totally blind and then you end up telling them something that doesn't jive with them. And then you completely break rapport. There's been a lot of people that we, we've met and it's like, they go one, two pitch or yeah. one pitch and that's, and it feels weird. I had a guy do that at the car wash the other day. Um, on Saturday, I was getting a, I was getting the car washed and the guy's pitching on an annual pass for next, not next year, but 2021. And I was like, whoa, 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 too soon, bro. I already got an annual pass, <laughs> right? He didn't, he didn't qualify the prospect and he certainly didn't build enough rapport uh, to, to get me to shell out for an annual pass for a year and a half away. So, um, so it happens all the time. So that's why one, two, and three is so important for you start that. So you, a moment ago, you said this, 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 and just suppose you didn't have that pain. What would that feel like? What would that do for your life? That's a great beginning to build up the closing question of, so is it your intentions to work with us? Very good. So thank you so much. If you really like this, then share it with somebody you love that uh, needs a little help with sales. Also, all of our friends from the Yeager Training Community invite some more people. We want to grow our community and make a whole bunch of life like-minded entrepreneurs, business owners, people that are continuing to put themselves out of the comfort zone and build success. We need to support each other. Absolutely. So, the best way we do that is personal growth and development. Yes work harder on ourselves than we do our businesses and our businesses will thrive. thrive. Yes. Thank you so much. We will see you on Wednesday. Happy Monday. See you soon. Happy Monday. Love you all. Bye. Bye.